Welcome to the Real Comic Heroes Podcast. Your adventure into the world of comic book movies starts here. Greetings, citizens, and welcome to another adventure of the Real Comic Heroes Podcast. My name's Travis. And I'm Patrick. And we are here to do the damn thing. Yeah. Uh, This is going to be a rough one. (laughs) <laughs> I assume this movie was a uh, Cinemax exclusive. You're not far off. Um, it was it was released as part of a series, I guess, called Roger Corman Presents on Showtime. Ah, it gave me a cable movie. Yeah, yeah. Kind of vibe. So I think Cinemax is just my default yeah. for uh, the 90s. Sure. Yeah, it definitely uh, drifts into that Skinamax Showtime up late at night sort of movie <laughs> territory a few times. So yeah, didn't uh, what's his face? Uh, Bruce Campbell had like a a show on TBS or TNT where he watched movies like these. Oh yeah, it was like Drive, not Drive In. There know. were a it, few of those types. It was of like shows. a trailer park kind of set he was on. <laughs> Okay, so kind of an Elvira type thing. Yeah, we're yeah. hosting a show or the dinner and a movie. And I could on. have seen this on Elvira if it wasn't. Yeah, it's like right up her That's, alley. Yeah, I guess we should say we're here to do Vampirella from 1996. Um, I guess the comic sort of got its roots in that that kind of genre. There were a few comics from uh, Warren publishing that had like uncle creepy and something some other like horror almost like a crypt keeper type thing where they oh, were okay. essentially hosts of the magazine and they would you know host these horror comic stories in them so they created vampirella to kind of do that same thing like she was the gonna be just a, a host of these anthology <clears throat> stories Mm -hmm. But then eventually they just started writing actual stories about Vampirella and started including her in her own comics, which, you know, makes sense. She's from Vampirella number one uh, from like 1969. So she goes back, you know, good long ways. Yeah, it gave me like a, I guess, like a 70s vibe. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll definitely get into a lot of that. There's there's good reason that. She has that type of vibe. I know neither of us had any history seeing this movie before. I thought it was Um, an animated film. (laughs) Yeah. Had you heard of the character? I must have to at least know I was confusing some other animated movie. I think you're thinking of of a Pam Anderson animated movie called Stripperella that I think... Probably probably is around the 2000s. Yeah, that one came later. No, it yeah. was. I don't know why I thought this was a 90s, like a mid 90s. Okay. Yeah, because stripper led. Yeah, no, it's completely different. Okay, I just assumed that's where you were, gotcha. con- you know, mixing the name yeah, up. With yeah, the, the Ella. The, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because Stripperella just made me think it was like a barbed wire kind of offshoot. Sure. So. Yeah, Barbarella is a movie. Just yeah. Kind of blending the names. Yeah, yeah. I think I might have just... It's such a generic name. Like sure. vampire and then adding something. Yeah. It's almost like... I mean, why I thought the 70s is like a Blackula. Sure. Where yeah, they yeah. just take the vampire theme and yeah. hone it to a specific either 
right. this time it's a woman. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> so maybe that's why I got the seventies vibe. It seemed like a uh, exploitation kind of film. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 I knew of this movie. Obviously, had never seen it before. Um, but I've known about the character of Vampirella for just years and years. I mean, if you kind of follow comic books, you know, you'll run into things like this, like Vampirella. You'll see the covers um, in in comic book stores, in comic book magazines. They'll talk about Vampirella or show the artwork um, back in the days of like being on Tumblr and um, places like that. You'll see just gorgeous 70s painted covers for the Vampirella magazines and the the I mean they are works of art you know and they a lot of them have that 70s uh Italian kind of oh, okay. feel to them um yeah. I know uh Frank Frazetta did the first cover and, and and many other covers there's a guy named Joe Gisco who did a lot of the painted covers um it has that feel like if you don't know like Frank Frazetta's name you definitely, if you just look up uh, the Death Dealer, he did a painting called the Death Dealer. It has like this okay. barbarian on horseback, and it's it's iconic, you know. But so his style uh, really blended well with the the Vampirella, I guess, uh, aesthetic. Okay. So it, you know, Vampirella as a image, I've known for years, decades, um, and I'm really fond of like looking at those covers because they're really beautiful, but. Yeah, I've never known any of the story aside from some somewhere down the line. I I acquired some trading cards that were Vampirella trading cards. <laughs> I probably have like seven of them, you know. And the the backs of those cards had enough information. It was like she comes from the planet Draculon, and I mean, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. So some of that is accurate to to this movie. Um, yeah. but yeah, I, I really knew nothing about her story or any of that and having watched this movie i still don't know if i know much of her story that's you know if any of it really comes from the comics or not but yeah i yeah (laughs) honestly like i'm fairly certain my brain has protected me from watching this and (laughs) is forcing me to forget yeah because yeah it's so we recently did the unreleased Fantastic Four, the Roger Corman produced Fantastic Four movie. And this is up there with that. You know, this was also had a budget of a million dollars. That must be like a Corman kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know staple, he's like for you know. cheap. And yeah. yeah. And yeah, so let's, I saw this one also had a, a estimated budget of a million and it it looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my favorite was the sliding doors that looked like somebody was pulling cardboard <laughs> yeah when they were in draculon right yeah yeah i was just like the, the draculon sets were it, right off the bat they look like they're in a an airport or a bus depot and then <laughs> um her father yeah. they're talking to each other uh vampirella or ella and her father are talking and he goes to leave her and he gets on a, it's a moving, I don't know what they're called. They look like escalators, but they're yeah. completely flat, you know? So it's a mm-hmm. moving sidewalk, essentially. Yeah, like a Segway, and but it's kind of, but it's constant it's some, motion. Yeah, you stand on it, you walk forward, and it's going just fast enough to, you know, you see them in airports, and I yeah. saw them all over the place when we were in Las Vegas. And I thought, I guarantee they shot this in a casino or in some, you know, some place in Vegas or, and then come to find out they shot a lot of this in Las Vegas. So it doesn't surprise me that they, you know, had those moving, uh, those, those people movers or whatever. So yeah, I was thinking somewhere out there in New Mexico or yeah, Vegas somewhere. Cause if you want cause a lot of those casinos are connected to each other. If you want to get from, you know, one to the other one side of Vegas to the another to another there you can just use those but yeah isn't that um that's her stepfather right it is but yeah. a few times they even just call him her father you know I get the sense that he's the man who raised her yeah they they briefly touch on her her lineage her they they touch on it 
in, in like the middle of the movie and then they never revisit yeah. it or explain it. So for all intents and purposes, he is her father. They yeah. do show her mother once in a flashback. Mm-hmm. I assume it's her stepmother. Well, she right. wouldn't have her. a stepmother and yeah, a stepfather true. probably. So I assume I think it's I'm her just used to mother. aliens from another planet being orphans. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. No, so this this movie does starts off it's you know very generic opening, just black. You're you're in yeah. space. You're you, we see a planet and it says Draculon thirty centuries ago. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird um, way to put that. <laughs> yeah, I had to rewind it. I'm like. 30 centuries like well and in, in what about 3000 years ago like, yeah <laughs> and they they mentioned the 30 centuries several times in the movie yeah and i happened to be um I, I was listening to the the trailer for this movie and at one point the voiceover says uh 300,000 years ago and i'm like wait a minute <laughs> 30 centuries is not 300,000 years. It's 3,000 years. Yeah. And so somewhere along the line, they didn't even give the, whoever was reading the copy, you know, for, for the, uh, trailer just didn't even have the right figure or I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> Couldn't do that century math. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we open up on Draculon. It's totally just shot in an airport or casino, like I said, in Vegas. Yeah. Um, give me a Bill and Ted's future vibe. Yeah, I get I get the feeling that they saved a lot in their shooting locations. So because nothing, the sets are very warehouses and yeah, the sets are very cheap. There's a few times they go to like old west, you know, (laughs) Hollywood type old west towns. You can tell or they're not being used. They must be cheap to go out there for a, a few days and film, you know. A couple of the other locations are a hotel room, you know. So yeah. I think they're they're doing a lot of this stuff really on the cheap. So which you know, if you're gonna try and make a movie, I, mean, I guess like you know that's how you got to get it get it done, you know, whatever. But yeah, but it was more than that. I mean, yeah, their transitions were weird. Mm, yeah. Like when they're flying in space after <laughs> uh, Vlad escapes, right. It, it like fade cuts into earth present day with the spaceship still flying into like a random building. <laughs> so I, it was weird. I, I did. I did see something that said to keep this thing cheap. They reused some Roger Corman like that's the, when Vlad oh, escapes Draculon, really? they're using some, some other Roger Corman movie, you know, some space, you know, <laughs> thing where they just use a spaceship flying through space from that other movie. So yeah. they pay for it. They already had it. But uh, yeah, the movie starts. It's it just it's Superman. You know, it's like they're mm-hmm. they're putting uh, Vlad, who is kind of like a General Zod. Yeah. You know, they're, they're putting him in, on trial for um, essentially this is a society of vampires who have lived for centuries and they no longer, you know, they kill for blood. Like blood is so readily available. It's literally (laughs) the rivers on this planet are literally blood. So they don't need to kill to get blood, but Vlad is a, you know, he's, he's more traditional. He'd prefer to kill. So they're trying to, put him on trial and bring back the death penalty so that they can kill Vlad and get rid of him. See, they made it seem like him drinking from other vampires, I assume mm-hmm. extended his life or increased his power. Oh, and maybe, the, maybe it did ex- give him power. I don't know. Cause like um, yeah, it doesn't make any, like, honestly, when I heard the river running with blood, I was like, so it rains blood and mm-hmm, right. Blood is like water to humans. I think so, was, yeah. So it's just, <laughs> I was trying to get my head wrapped around that. Yeah. Or is the planet like a living blood pumping machine? <laughs> like, <laughs> I was just trying to figure out why there's blood. Right. But yeah, yeah. It, they made it sound like him doing uh, or sucking the blood of vampires made him more powerful or, powerful or extended his life in some way. Maybe. I didn't well, catch that or... But, but yeah, maybe. Um, 
anyways, Vlad kills kills the entire like council as he's being, you know, as they're kind of going around and saying he's guilty, kind of like Superman too. <laughs> and he's the 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 door bursts in, and and a couple of his uh, I don't know followers, I guess, yeah. uh, come in and they start blasting everybody and kill the entire council. And there's no guard. I mean, there's one guard that, that they kill to do this, you know, very uh, lax yeah. on their uh, security. And so they kill him. Uh, Vlad bites the neck of, I don't even know what this guy's name is. Um, Vampirella's father, but the, the leader of this society. Yeah. So kills him. And, um, uh, as like literally as they're walking out of frame, Vlad and, and his followers, he's they're walking out of frame and Ella like walks in at the exact same time. So it's almost like if she just hurried, she would have seen who did this, but she still somehow yeah. knows who who does it. So you know, they uh, suck some blood for some weird reason. Yeah. And uh, jet off. Right. To, yep. uh That third planet from the sun. Yeah. And knowing that the this this section of space that they're in is 30 centuries ago and yeah they fly off and and <laughs> come to earth and I'm like but in when they get to earth it says present day so I'm like wait are they saying they arrived at earth in present day and the the space journey was Yeah, so it was confusing. Long, or you find out throughout the movie they got here, you yeah. know, probably 30 centuries ago or close to it so they've been here for centuries yeah so, and uh, then vampirella was in like a superman capsule that kept her from aging and, or... it got delayed yeah, yeah yeah her you find out her spaceship got delayed somehow and she crash lands on mars and she lays in a like a stasis tube yeah. for almost the, the the same 30 centuries so yeah, we'll we'll <laughs> we'll get to kind of how she comes to Earth here in in a little bit. Yeah. So, did you enjoy the score, like the incidental music that was just like <laughs> not really? <laughs> I didn't um, either. It was just so hokey, and it didn't match. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like at all, sometimes. No. And it almost sounded like it made me think of like a Mr. Bean episode. <laughs> okay. And I was waiting for something funny and comical to happen as the sure. guy was like walking around or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But no payoff. Um, there's a moment where, you know, when she is at her father's side as he's dying, you know, he, he tells her that he loves her and everything. And, and I forget if he says, says something about her avenging. Yeah. You know, don't this. waste your life or something. Yeah. Avenging um, him. That or seems, lose your soul. That's what yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Well, that seems fine enough. And throughout the movie, um, we've got Talisa Soto is playing Vampirella. And she goes back to, we talked about her in License to Kill, one of the, one of the oh, Dalton yeah. Bond movies. She was also Katana in the Mortal Kombat mm-hmm. first couple movies. I know we didn't cover those, but that's what where I know her from, at least from... <laughs> from License to Kill and, and that first mm-hmm. Mortal Kombat movie. Um, I don't mind her really in this movie. Um, I read quite a bit that everyone seemed to think, like even the director says, yeah, that she was miscast and he didn't want to use her, but he he had to use her. Like they, someone someone cast her and, and he couldn't change that. So he even, <laughs> even like publicly says, like she was miscast. She's not who I wanted. So, but I didn't have a problem with her. Yeah, I mean, I felt like she suffered from um, it's a very action heavy role. And I think she suffered from costuming a lot because she was always very stiff. Sure. And I don't know how you could even move in those pants or shorts or whatever (laughs) they were. There's so it's 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 all pleather. Yeah. Her outfit or it's there's a lot of that material in this movie. Um, and yeah, her <laughs> costume, it's an iconic look that they really, it hasn't changed really from the comics, you know, to present day, except this movie completely changes it. And it makes sense because the, the, the comic version of her costume, it's essentially the Borat costume. If you want to yeah. think about it, like it's, it's essentially a top and I mean, it's 
it's sort of a swimsuit where it covers the breasts and it covers, you know, her, her crotch. And it, it just connects like two strips of fabric from the top all the way down to the bottom, kind of like the Borat costume yeah. um, with a little like collar that, that goes with it. And so yeah, the color is just weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they did that because it's part of the original look. Yeah. Um, but you couldn't, I don't think you could have really filmed that original costume because if she moved at all, she would have fallen out of the costume. Yeah. You know, so they, they end up making it essentially a bikini, you know, a, mm-hmm. a top and, and bottom connected with a few like, uh, strips of, of material to kind of give it that same quality yeah. as the original costume. It doesn't work. It's all pleather. Like I said, it's, yeah, it's, it's weird. stiff. It's weird. Yeah. She's wearing a trench coat just to take it off. Like, <laughs> So yeah. I'm guessing it was just very uncomfortable. So she wore the trench coat when she could. Maybe. Yeah. It was, I don't know. Like, did I miss an explanation as to why she's wearing that? Not at all. No, they okay. don't explain. They Nothing is explained in this movie. Because bring... Vlad just has normal clothes on. Sure. Yeah. Like, And so does the other girl that's with his group. Sure. She wears some like also very sexy outfits you yeah know, but i mean it's skimpy, more yeah than what she's got <laughs> sure yeah but, yeah i mean i the whole considering the fo- the acting in this i i was fine with her sure like I, she, at, at, at a few points i got a very gal gadot vibe from her like if huh. you made a 90s wonder woman movie she would have been oh, yeah. you know a good choice like yeah so then we we cut to it says Los Angeles for some reason. Um, but if they, they have a, an establishing shot of this building, it's kind of like an antique stop mm-hmm. shop. It's it's like a Pier 1 imports <laughs> also. Yeah. But if they, they establish it with the building is in frame, it says Los Angeles present day. <clears throat> if you look at the roof of this building, there's a billboard on the roof. And it says like Nevada's own, you know, one and only like... <laughs> whatever kind whatever thing that it's advertising oh, so man. even in that this establishing shot they don't bother to no. cover this billboard that clearly indicates that they're they're yeah. shooting in nevada yeah. <laughs> so nice. yeah oh i didn't notice so yeah but it's this guy he he walks through this uh you know antique store and is he's this weirdly dressed guy because he looks like a dork but he's wearing like a motorcycle vest with a that's like a silk Henley. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just completely not the right look for, I don't know. There's a uh, lot he, of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he goes to this underground, it leads us to this underground facility. It's full of people with guns and you can tell it's like this quasi government paramilitary organization. And they, they, over time, they explain to us that they're, hunting vampires or this, this goes back again, nothing gets explained in this movie, yeah. you know? And so we're just, I guess, left on our own to figure out that these people are keeping the vampire thing, a secret and keeping it in check, hunting yeah. vampires and coming up with new ways of killing them and stuff. So <laughs> they, uh, they also happen to see this uh, shuttle mission is returning from Mars. So, Hooray, we've got manned missions going to Mars with the, with the shuttle. Yeah. And they're looking at this footage, and they see a, a uh, what looks like a bat is flying out of the shuttle door <laughs> as it's coming, you know, as it's like on the the uh, runway or, you know, landing strip. Yeah. So they think, well, vampires coming from, from space now. But yeah, it's... Um... <laughs> I mean, we already knew there was vampires coming from space. Yeah, but yeah, but, now uh, the humans are learning that, yeah. or you know, they don't really believe it necessarily. They're they're just kind of like it's it's another thing for them to look into, I guess. Yeah. Um, and that's when it it just cuts to some dork walking through a, a oh, foggy God. alley, and he's carrying a computer <laughs> and one of, you know one of the old nineties computer and. Uh, monitor you know setups yeah, and a lot 
it's so lightweight and flimsy. You can actually hear the foley of this thing moving around. It's not even the foley, it's the actual audio. Because you yeah. can hear this hollow plastic thing bouncing around as he's trying to hold it. And if you grew up in the 90s, you know how heavy this stuff is. Those monitors are huge and, and so, oh, yeah. just so heavy. You couldn't, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's like... Uh, uh one of those old school tubes that like it's yeah. like a, a foot and a half two feet deep and right the like i guess the desktop itself is just a monster and yeah. but this, then these uh, these two guys come and uh harass this dude yeah you know i guess gonna rob him of his computer that he's carrying and the one dude even says like how am i supposed to do graphics on this thing <laughs> like oh, God. I, I don't i don't know but Come on, uh, Travis, you're a graphic designer. No, right? I know. Yeah. But uh, I guess got you got paint, right? Yeah. Got MS paint. That's all you need. Yeah. I thought this was like the 80s part of the movie with uh, sure. the stereotypical nerd. And it totally looks like Andy Samberg. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Oh, man. Uh, the other two guys that are harassing him look like they're just, they just got off the set of a 70s porn. I mean, they. <laughs> yeah. Um, the one so they hear this fluttering and then there's more fog that rolls in and and they're kind of looking around wondering what's going on and then out of nowhere vampirella appears and oh boy uh one of the guys says holy crap and she regards that oh, for God, a second yeah. and she says holy a uh, how does she even say it like a religious you know exclamation or to or to to regard something with a religious whatever and and crap to mean you know excrement from the bowels of a creature or whatever yeah just breaking down what holy crap means and that's literally how our hero like starts out this adventure on earth yeah it's um it's like a, a spock moment yeah <laughs> kind of that's a what bit, I yeah. of. but luckily uh draculon speaks english as well well she or... explains later on that she learned everything essentially on the trip from mars yeah. to earth on the space shuttle she learned all the you know she learned english and, and everything but uh yeah so she rescues or saves this uh this kid and he takes her back to his place we find out his name is he says he says his name is Fori. um i thought at first that this is a nickname because he has glasses and yeah, it means four like eyes. four eyes. And <laughs> yeah. he's, he's calling himself Forey. But then when he said his name is Forey Ackerman and it, I'm not, I'm not well versed enough with Vampirella to know that the creator's name, the creator of Vampirella was Forrest J Ackerman. Oh. Uh, but I did see it <laughs> in the credits of this movie when it opens up, it did say Vampirella created by Forrest J Ackerman. So as soon as he said Forey Ackerman, I'm like, oh, well, that's cute, I guess, to, you know, name him after the creator. But then I thought, like, what? is this going to be a recurring character at the end of the movie? Is he going to say, hey, I created this character called Vampirella. She's a vampire, you know, superhero or something like that. But yeah. we'll, we'll never see him again in this movie. Nope. <laughs> so they Move really they, they spend enough time with him that you think. Okay, he's gonna yeah. he's gonna come back into it later. No, nope, not mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, I realized that once I heard uh, Adam's last name. Oh sure. And I was like, oh okay, he's the one that we're gonna hang out with. <laughs> um, at at Forey's place, she she starts to ask about the people that she's hunting that, that she's here to find, and completely being open that she's here to kill people. And she's, she rattles off a few names, you know, Vlad and Sala and Demos. Mm -hmm. And she says Trax. And Forey's like, oh, Professor Trax? So, yeah, you know, so essentially he, he recognizes the name. It's the name of a professor that I don't know if he's a current student, but he knows that Trax is a, a professor at Berkeley. Oh. So he pulls him up on the internet, <laughs> and the, the very 1996 internet and has a picture of him and she instantly recognizes him as one of Vlad's uh, yeah. you know followers so that takes us that that informs us that that's going to take us to you know her mission's going to start in Berkeley yeah she gets a 
pretty uh, hardcore. Yeah. Uh, so I liked uh, Trax uh, was super 90s with his ponytail and suit. Oh, sure. That was very um, uh, silk stockings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Slick back ponytail yeah. suit that's like three sizes too big. Oh, totally. And uh, he was just a family man trying to make ends meet. Yeah, that's so been great. Yeah. 30 it... centuries. He's changed. <laughs> right. Uh, um, she doesn't care. No, no. Um, before we get to her meeting up with Trax, though, they do have like a scene where we're suddenly in Brazil. In oh, yeah. like 19, it looks like 1930s Brazil, you know, because it's just this old West town yeah. looking place. And this old, you know, Rolls Royce pulls up and and then we're suddenly in a, uh, you know, the Star Wars cantina and this Brazilian gangster is talking to some people explaining really like, <laughs> yeah, explaining that like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm weaseling in on your territory. I'm taken from you, but you guys did the same thing. We all know how the game is played. Yada, yada, yada. Essentially just explaining that, you know, he's taking money from, from these other people. And we see these other people and they look like matrix revolutions, rejects, you know, <laughs> they're all clad in this black pleather from yeah. head to toe sunglasses. And then I realized that one of them, the one that there's three of them and one of them speaking is, uh, it's Demos. It's, it's one of the guys that was with Vlad at the beginning. My favorite character, Demos. Yeah, no, Demos is, is pretty good. <laughs> And they set up in the establishing shot when they pull up to this this little villa. It's daytime, you know. So I guess it explains why they why they're in head to toe black yeah. leather, so they're covered, but their faces are completely exposed except for sunglasses. Yep. You know. So again, well, they, what are, what are the rules? <laughs> they call it a sunsuit, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Later on. Yeah, I got confused by the rules as well. Yeah. I know she explains, you know, there was a mutation with the atmosphere. Sure. Yeah. After a period of time. Yeah. But I think I got that confused with, I don't know. It got, it got very convoluted because I was thinking that only the people bitten and turned vampires had these weaknesses. Sure. But it doesn't seem to be the case. So, right. But then they don't have all the weaknesses. Like Christianity is a weakness. <laughs> I yeah. Don't know. Yeah, it's very confusing which type of vampire has which weakness. Totally. So one thing that, I, that I was kind of cool is like when we first meet this, it's Carlos, this Brazilian uh, guy. Like once the uh, once Demos starts talking to him, and you realize, okay, Demos is open about being a vampire. So yeah. I thought, oh, okay, Carlos just is a gangster, and he knows that he works for vampires. And then they cut back to Carlos. And you see he has fangs. And it's like, yeah. oh, Carlos is a Brazilian vampire. That's kind of cool. I didn't realize it at first because either he didn't have the fangs in when he was first talking and now he does, <laughs> or he just kind of hit it well enough the, the first time he was talking. But I, I like that, that it just establishes that there there's Brazil. Uh, sorry, there's Dracula's all over the place. So. Yeah, he uh, Carlos says something about Draculon and this legend that they came from space and like even amongst vampire uh, mm -hmm. Draculas, like that's even a legend, like apparently. So yeah. I kind of like that, that we know that it's actually legit, but they don't. So it's like they have their own little mythology. So um, the driver of this car that we saw pull up like this. <laughs> Uh, suddenly this this secret organization shows up with matching hats with matching hats with cru crucifixes on it <laughs> yep. and they show up with guns and they're all wearing uh, black and and they're like real commando types and they kill so hard yeah they they kill the driver he falls out and and gets hit with sunlight so you you find out he was a, a dracula as well um yeah horrible and, reflexes by the driver by the way yeah all the vampires in this, none of them really ever exhibit like your stereotypical vampire powers, you know, strength no. and speed. And, you know, some of them, you know, show those qualities, but they can be taken out with these guns that the humans have. Of course, they're shooting like miniature stakes, you know, that sort yeah. of thing. So 
guess it makes sense enough, but again, like they don't explain any of this. You're just meant to figure it out kind of on the way. Yeah. I mean, the main thing they do is flutter away as bats. Yeah. Oh God. Like they don't seem to be super fast or. (laughs) Well, we only see. Occasionally, um, but. (laughs) I think we only see Vlad and, and her do the, the bat transformation thing. No, they, cause there's, maybe that was later on in the movie. There's like a group of like five or six and they get two of them, but three of them fly away. Oh, you're right. Okay. When they're, it's towards the end though. Yep. Yep. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Other than that, they're just kind of humans with a bad sun allergy. Yeah. Um, the, the lead of this, you know, leather clad, Dracula is, is like he's they've got Carlos they've strung him up upside down he's kind of in a crucifix you know yeah. they're torturing him with sunlight which is fun and that's when they get interrupted by these commandos that are storming the place and he gets they, they don't really they just show the these guys showing up with guns and then it cuts away so I, I guess we're meant to believe that they tune in next week a fight you know yeah uh, I don't know yeah but uh, then it cuts back to uh, Berkeley it establishes yep. that we're in Berkeley and we're, we're seeing this professor walking through his, uh, I guess his science department at night. And he's talking to his wife on the phone saying he's headed home. He's going to stop at the pick and save on the, on the way or something, yeah. pick up dinner or something. It's very, uh, suburban, you know? And, uh, we see it like he's got photos of his kids and family on his desk. And that's when Vampirella shows up and, starts threatening him and, and wanting to know about, you know, where's Vlad. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, I've, I've given up that life. That's, that was so long ago. And I, I kind of believe him for a while um, until like she bears her fangs at him. And then he comes at her, jumps over the desk and attacks her. But up, up until then, you know, I actually thought maybe, yeah, maybe he did go legit. It um, seemed like he did even after she killed him. He had a family. That she- yeah. He I was mean, totally living a f- yeah. family life, it seems. I assume he was just protecting himself, like it was a natural. He, he could have been. Yeah, we don't get enough uh, other information about this guy to to know. Yeah, there's no but, more talking at this point. But uh, <laughs> it's all fighting. Yeah, she says something about uh, ask him asks him if it's like his family, and he says, "My current mm-hmm. one." Yeah, because so, he's you know thirty centuries old, so. right? <laughs> so he's he's had probably families over the years. And, yeah. But mm-hmm. it's a, they get into a fight. She tosses him out a window and he gets impaled on something. Yeah, like a fence or something. I don't know. Some but, post. Um, yeah, it, uh, I, I wrote down, man, he's yelling a really long time. Like, And then it's like two-story drop, yeah. <laughs> essentially, yeah. from the angle we get. Mm-hmm. She does her, uh, her bat transformation yeah. and flies out the window. And when I tell you that the transformation into a bat is literally like it goes from a freeze frame to a bunch of squiggles. And I've got it like freeze framed. It is literally some squiggles. <laughs> it's not even really in the shape of a bat. It's just some black lines, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and it's sort of animated, you know, it's kind of a stop motion animation that they just do some squiggles that kind of flutter across the screen and out of frame. And then, you know, cut to, uh, I don't know. Uh, this is tracks, the guy that she just killed. So then it cuts yeah. to his home and, and like a balcony outside his window and the, the bat just appears there and suddenly she's there. <laughs> it's, it's so bad. Yeah. Uh, I wish I could say it's so bad. It's good. It, right. Uh, there's a lot of that in this movie. It's you want it to be campy and fun, but it's not. It takes it's, itself way too seriously. Right. Yeah. And uh, what's his face? Roger Daltrey just constantly <laughs> takes me out of this movie. So, you know, I got to give it up to him because he fucking He's commits. Going for it. But man, <laughs> I keep going. Hey, let's do from the who. See, so I've got enough experience with Roger Daltrey in the Highlander TV series. Oh, and okay. I've actually been watching a lot of Highlander lately yeah. um, and, and seeing some of his old episodes and everything. And like, he commits to this kind of stuff. He's not afraid to, to be this 
you know, just just genre character actor. So that didn't throw me off much. Uh, there is a part later that I'm like, how is this guy in the who? <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. Know. Um, we get to see a sneak peek in the next scene. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so she's at this uh, tracks is at his house and yeah. like, kind of going through his, his desk for a, a second maybe looking at a journal and then she goes to another room in the house and it's like the kid's bedroom. And she's like, it's it's just kind of creepy. Yeah. She just watching them both sleep for a second and uh, sees a a poster on the wall for Jamie blood. Some, some, you can tell he's like some rock star, but it's horrible poster. (laughs) It really is, but it's Vlad, you know, it's, it's Roger Daltrey. So she learns that Vlad is now this Jamie blood, some uh, rock star. And then we cut to the the underground organization. I keep calling it that because we don't have a name for it. We don't know if yeah. this is a government agency. We don't know if it has a name. Uh, they'll kind of name it later. But they're torturing uh, Demos with garlic and threatening him with holy water, which is a really cool scene. Um, most of the scenes you get with Demos are pretty good. And, and Demos is played by uh, Brian Bloom who it's like Brian Bloom is not quite Richard Grieco or Jason Patrick or uh, what's the other one? I uh, Jeff Fahey. Like he's that kind of guy. Yeah. He's been in tons of stuff, but he's just never really made it big. He's he does a ton of video game and animation voiceover stuff. Um, he's voiced just tons of characters over the years. He's he's like the kind of the go-to Captain America voice for the last several uh, video game properties for Marvel in the you know mid 2000s. Yeah, I see he's got a lot of video game credits. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was in the A team, like the the live action A team uh, movie. Okay. It just as like one of the like the guy the the people trying to stop the A team. Like he was the right-hand man to whoever was in charge there. And I think totally fine. Okay. You yeah, know. I haven't seen that. <laughs> oh, it's it's fun. You should you should definitely yeah. see that. Yeah, it's it's worth a. I had fond childhood memories of the A Team and yeah, Mr. T. And <laughs> without Mr. T, I can't imagine it still being the A Team. Yeah, it's you know, I, I like it a lot. I think it's fun. I'll have to give it a shot then. <laughs> yeah, Travis recommended. <laughs> so then uh, they torture. Like I said, they're torturing Demos, and he gives up. Like, where Vlad is says he's in Vegas. It's like, yeah, no shit. (laughs) (laughs) You mean Los Angeles? (laughs) No, that he's actually takes him to Vegas because he's performing at some, you know, one of the casinos or whatever. Yeah. And that's where it takes us to this club that, I mean, it's to call it a club. There are like 13 people in the audience (laughs) They're all just rocking out from their seated, like seated in their chairs. But they're like, like no one goes to a rock club of. It's a cocktail lounge. It it really is. Like one dude is just sitting there in his seat, just bang, you know, head banging. (laughs) Like, come on, at least like get a few more extras and have them like kind of forming a mosh pit around the (sighs) stage. You know, that's what I didn't get. It's still, I mean, he's a legitimate rock legend you couldn't use that to draw in more people <laughs> I, yeah i don't i don't think i think he could draw that kind of crowd i don't think yeah. they could have you know afforded to rent the space for that you know what i mean well no, i mean they didn't even fill the little space they had <laughs> like, no no I'm just and saying. like roger daltrey is never in the same scene or like shot as this club like, like he's only yeah. shot from like one angle i mean later on he'll be walking around this this cocktail lounge you know but yeah the he's he's up on stage he's doing this this number the song that he sings in the movie and it's it's so bad it's all about drinking blood and it's a it's a total you know vampire song yeah that it's like if you didn't know he was a vampire like like i think this guy's a vampire but yeah it's his, it's real bad. I don't know and what it's, his, has hair that weird. <laughs> he's got like this Padawan braid extension in the front on the side. side of his yeah, head. Like, yeah. 
<laughs> he's so distracting. Oh man, his his wardrobe in this is pretty bad. But it's like yeah. him singing this song, and it's like, how is this guy part of the Who? Like, I legitimately love the Who, and <laughs> like this guy is a musician. Yeah, <laughs> just completely does not track. But um, there's a guy, an older guy, uh, kind of rocking out. Oh god, if yeah. you can call yeah, it that, too. in the audience, that's the actual forest. Uh, Jay Ackerman, that's the actual creator, uh, I found out. (laughs) So he gets a little cameo here. Uh, But Vampirella is just in the audience and watching the show. And you can tell, like, they take notice of each other. Uh, Roger Dalton or uh, Vlad, you know, he he definitely notices her when he's up there on stage singing. And then when when the show's over, he, he comes out into the crowd and he comes up to her table and kind of flirts with her and and... I mean, how how did you know he noticed her? Oh. Was it when the rest of the crowd disappeared <laughs> and it was just her? When literally everyone in the in the club disappeared. Yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> it's shots like that that I just I'm like, why did you take the time to even do that? Well, they do set up later. He says a line like, "From the moment I first met you, or first laid eyes on you, I knew you were something special about you." So I think that's what that's supposed to be. They don't hang out. They, you know, they don't. Did he not see her when he was sucking the blood? No, because the... no? they okay. literally exit frame before she comes uh, okay. in. Like you can see them, like we can see them both on screen at the same time. Uh-huh. But by the time she comes into the room, they've okay. already like exited literally like the door to the to the <laughs> left or whatever. God. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and it's so they're kind of flirty and he's, you know, put, kind of putting the moves on her. And saying, hey, let's get out of here. And it's, you know, if she's here on some revenge mission, you know, she's literally got the guy that killed her father. Yeah. Just kill him. You know, what are you hiding for? Like, why not just kill him or attack him? You know, uh, but she goes along with it and they go out to make out mountain. And <laughs> yeah. um, again, he's putting the moves on her. Um, and there's a cool moment where they both go in to bite each other's necks but neither of them realize that the other has fangs bared and are about to bite the other's neck. So it's kind of a cool little shot. And then they're interrupted by this, uh, uh, again, this underground organization. They, they hit them with their floodlights yeah, and surround them with guns. And it, it's enough of a threat to make Vlad go along with everything and, and be arrested, you know? Yeah. And, I thought it was going to be like UV lights or something, to yeah. burn them, but it was just a they, bright spotlight. They established that they have like sunlight UV lights later on, but I don't yeah. know like if they a have a gun that, that shoots yet. like sunlight or something. Yeah, but they go without a fight. Um, yeah. At this point, like Vlad thinks that he was set up. He realizes when he pulls away from being about to bite her neck, you know, they get hit with the light. He pulls away sees that she has fangs bared and is like, Oh, you're, are you with them? You're a, you're a vampire. You know, you set me up thinking she's just a, just a vampire. So he kind of backhands her, knocks her out. Yeah. So the, this, these agents, they just, uh, take both of them, put them both in separate vans and they're going to take them back to their compound to, you know, do what they do, I guess. Shoot them up with holy water. Right. So he turns into jelly. (laughs) Right. Oh, oh, that was such a good line. Um, yeah, I meant to point that out when they were torturing Demos with the the holy water. Um, this old guy is like, you know what this stuff does to you? It's going to turn you into a jelly. We're going to have to clean you up with a mop off the floor. <laughs> I love that part. He's like, get the needle out of my arm, man. Yeah. He's legitimately like freaking out. And that's why he gives, gives up that uh, yeah. Vlad is in Vegas. So... Uh, at some point in this uh, van ride, uh, we find out that their Operation Purge, I guess, is the name of their organization, which sounds more like the name of a mission. Yeah, well, or it's, operation. Yeah, I mean, operation is in the beginning, so. But I guess that way. for the purposes of clarity, we'll just call these guys like Purge from from here on out. I guess. Yikes. I just call them the Van Helsing boys. Yeah, I mean, we do find out that uh, Adam Van Helsing is the, <laughs> the the guy that we kind of were following earlier, and he's uh, he's here arresting Vlad, and and they take 
him and Vampirella. Like I said, they put him in vans. And you got uh, so Vlad and uh, Adam Van Helsing are in this one van, and uh, Vlad is talking about how like <clears throat> dropping hints about what happened to his father, the the legendary Conrad Van Helsing. Yeah, they uh, they are also kind of cutting to Vampirella's van, and she's just in with this creepy Kevin Smith looking agent, <laughs> and he essentially tells the the guard that's with him like, hey go up front and go sit in the front seat while I'm back here going to interrogate her. Very rapey vibe getting thrown off. Um, mm-hmm. But that doesn't go anywhere, be- you know, thankfully, because in the the main van, Vlad has like taken control of the driver. So he's he's kind of hypnotizing, kind of influencing the driver enough to sort of fall asleep at the wheel and yeah. it cra- he crashes the van into the two uh, motorcycle cops that are kind of guiding them. And then the van just makes this terrible oh, special yeah. effect, you know, crash Spread into up. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it crashes the, the Vampirella van. It also crashes cause it's trying to avoid the other crash. And it's actually a, a good crash. The, the, the Vampirella van, crashing is is actually pretty impressive but yeah, it's uh vlad's van that's a disaster yeah <laughs> so vlad threatens he, he goes back into to his <clears throat> van and and threatens adam van helsing like he's about to bite his neck and that's when vampirella okay. stops him and he oh he says that he could destroy her there's nothing that that she could do to stop him and yeah. he says but i'll do it on my own time and he flies away so <laughs> yeah like like okay yeah, it was a, a big epic battle that never was. Yeah. So then um, Van Helsing and uh, Vampirella, they, everyone else is dead, apparently. So they <laughs> yeah. head back to a motel, just this yeah. run-of-the-mill hotel room. <laughs> and uh, Some exposition. You get a lot of exposition, yeah. Uh, it, it's not terrible. You know, she explains... A, a bit about the the various uh, Draculas and, and whatnot, and gives a there's a flashback to yeah. her Vampirella's mother, and she's giving her, uh, Ella this uh, armband that she'll end up wearing yeah. that is full of you know essentially synthetic Synth- blood. Yeah. It, it's whatever the same blood that that runs in their rivers that. She's going to need this, this, you know, supply to take with her on her journey of revenge. But essentially it's an armband with a bunch of uh, vials of this blood that can, it says it'll last the rest of her life or whatever, you know, so. Convenient. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's just setting up that she has enough blood to keep her hunger at bay for the rest of her, you know, life. Which is crazy because they live a long time and. That makes it look like she needs like one of those every like hundred years or so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it, it becomes a plot point later. So it, it they just have to come up with a reason for her to be wearing this armband with uh, yeah. all this blood because essentially it's just part of her costume. And going back to the original yeah. comics, like she just has a gold armband, and that's basically what this is representing. But they came up with a reason for it to be there, I suppose. Um, and it, it'll come into play, like I said, later on and yeah. explain why she's not feeding on humans. But uh, she also explains that she crashed lands uh, when she was going through space, yeah. you know, following Vlad. She ends up getting stranded on Mars and she lays there in in cryo sleep, essentially for centuries until this manned mission to Mars shows up. These two astronauts take her her capsule with them. They put it on the shuttle. They're going to bring it back to Earth. And one of the shuttle pilots is John Landis, yeah. uh, you know, director John Landis. I, knew, I was like, I know who that is. Who is that? I had to look him up. Okay. <laughs> I was like, it can't be. Oh, it is. <laughs> they definitely like he gets enough, you know, uh, just enough screen time that you can tell like he's somebody. Yeah, I, I couldn't. You know, like, I didn't know John Landis well enough to identify him like that. Yeah, I mean, I knew he was somebody I've seen before. I, I didn't know it was like a, I didn't know it was John Landis. Yeah. 
per se, but I was like, I know this dude. He's this is a cameo. I, I could tell it was a cameo. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> there was a newscaster earlier on that I think was also somebody. Oh, really? I meant to okay. look him up, but I'm sure he was somebody. Maybe the director, actually. Um, oh. But <laughs> after the uh, let's see, after the uh, cameo business, the shuttle and whatnot, they oh, it's a uh, one of of uh, Vlad's followers, Sala, who is not played by Carrie Russell. I just need to explain that. <laughs> she looks like Carrie Rus- Russell. <clears throat> She's she arrives at this. It says Purgatory, Nevada. It's this old West town. Um, I'm pretty sure it's the same backlot, you know, Hollywood Western backlot that they used for, for Sao Paulo, Brazil earlier when they, <laughs> went to get Carlos like that same pretty sure it's the same location. Um, but it's supposed to be somewhere out in the, out in the desert in Nevada, that this old West town. And again, it's like, <clears throat> why are they setting up this vampire base in this old West town in Nevada? You know, it really just, to me, it just feels like this is a cheap location that they were able to yeah. do a lot with. So. Yeah, I mean, if I was a vampire, I'd be sticking north where it gets dark, you know, sooner or stays dark. Like, yeah, or in a city where you have access to people a lot easier. Yeah, um, and shade. I, yeah. <laughs> it's just desolate, barren wasteland yeah. full of sun. It's like the worst place for a vampire. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, so Sala, you know, she's one of, of Lad's kind of top lieutenants, really. Um she arrives at this at this location. She informs one of their like lackeys, Quinn, who will he'll, he'll have a lot more to do later. Yeah, so uh, he that, was a uh, part of uh, Silverado. Yeah, yeah, he was one of the. <laughs> he might have been in in our. Yeah. Just, okay. I was wondering if it was that guy. I think the so. Yeah. Sleazy uh, jailer or whatever. I think so. I can't remember. Yeah. So Sala comes to this, you know, old. Spanish villa uh, gets naked for reasons just in time for um, <laughs> Vlad to, to arrive and they kind of have a conversation and they talk about judgment night. And yeah. this might be like the second time that they, we hear about some big plan that Vlad has. Like he's got something in motion, the humans over at purge, they're worried about some, apocalyptic you know grand plan of uh vlad's and and then so she here she mentions judgment night here so you kind of get a get a new sense that that there's something going on uh, he informs her that uh the jamie blood's days are over uh he pulls the this extension his padawan braid out of his yeah. hair you know because you know th- that life is is over with um and i really kind of like that uh there are elements of this that feel so much like Highlander. And that's, that's one of them. Like your, your, oh, yeah. you know, your identity kind of gets compromised and you have to move on, you know? Yeah. So it's funny that he's got this organization after him and yeah. he decides to be a quote, big rock star. <laughs> right. And but... his disguise is a, hair extension well i assume they don't even know what his face looks like i don't think that's the, uh, the disguise okay. i don't think it's the braid that's so they know. only know his name for i, I guess because he may have centuries. been <laughs> yeah you figure he's been jamie blood for 20 years maybe if he's like if it's kind of meant to be him as being the front man of a, of a band like the who you know this is uh, i assume he's been doing this since the 70s you know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> But uh, I think that's what it's kind of meant to imply. Because it seems like they know the vampires that they run across aren't Vlad. Sure. Because they're always asking, where's Vlad? Yeah, yeah. So they know enough to know that those people aren't Vlad. Yeah. So it gets <laughs> right. confusing. It's like, yeah. how do you know if you don't know what he looks like? Mm. But Yeah, I don't know. Well, one of the many confusing pieces of this movie. Well, and then that takes us to Vampirella and... Van Helsing arriving at this antique shop, you know, storefront <laughs> yep. in the daytime and Vampirella gets out of the car. And so guess we're meant to understand that sunlight has no effect on her. 
and okay, Pence. I can I can go with that. She's not f- from Earth. I, you know, I they yeah, that's do. where I got confused. I thought yeah. Draculons don't have the weaknesses, but these well, they, hybrids do. So they do this. Right. This next scene is her yeah. coming into this purge base, and uh, Van Helsing introduces her to to kind of his superior, his his boss, yeah. essentially. And they do have a decent enough scene with a lot of exposition and a lot of like, okay, here's some of the rules, right? We come from Draculon. Uh, Vlad and his people arrived centuries before I did. And so they came to Earth and they essentially, somehow it has to do with them, like atmospheric conditions yeah. of them traveling through space or whatever and arriving here. It mutated them into what she calls pseudo vampires. Yeah. And then so when they are biting people, they're infecting instead of killing, which yeah. I get the sense that that that's an aberration. You know, that's where things start to be. That's where dra- uh, vampires come from it, on, on Earth is from yeah. the these four, the four that escaped yeah. Draculon. So they essentially all your vampire myths and, and legends all come from, from these people. Vlad, Vlad is literally will, will become Vlad the Impaler, you know, <laughs> Vlad, uh, uh, Tempish, Tepish, yeah. Tepish, Tepish. Yeah. That's the historical name for Vlad the, the Impaler, the actual like warlord from Hungary. So like that is literally this, this Vlad, you know, but he's probably had hundreds of identities across time. Yeah. I didn't, quite understand the whole cross and christianity Mm. piece like yeah why does that come into play at all yeah because crucifixes don't affect her because planet draculon has no ties to christianity or anything but then i guess because of their time on earth and the experiences with literal christianity have created enough an, an effect i don't know um I, I, I don't know um the holy water works on them the garlic stuff it it seems to affect them and obviously sunlight and uh yeah i don't yeah. know it, it, that whole scene just made me more confused when they explained everything <laughs> yeah it, for me I was like, it, is it- it, just it the at new least vampires is it right still the draculons that have all these like it at least explained to me that she's unaffected by anything yeah. and she's blade exactly this this movie is blade um <laughs> without the aforementioned blade yeah uh she uh they van helsing shows her that they have demos still like you know in in custody mm-hmm. and she can see him through a <sighs> exactly yeah she can see demos through this window and she's trying to like bang on the glass and apparently it's reinforced or whatever but i couldn't tell if she's like i, I didn't read it as there's anger in her eyes and she wants to kill demos which she should because he helped yeah. kill her father it almost looked like how dare you have a vampire chained up in here i need to release yeah, it was him. weird you know it, it's not enough and maybe that's a failing of the the actress. Like maybe she didn't sell what was supposed to be conveyed here, because it, to me it should be anger and like I want to kill this person. To me, it just looks like you know a weird mix of like why do you humans have a vampire yeah. cage? Uh, you know, like she's outraged. Yeah, exactly. So I I don't know which, but. Um watching that part right now <laughs> yeah i've got it playing like in the background. i love all the blinking lights <laughs> <laughs> it's a very like yeah this is a sciencey location um it's like they saw the computers from the first space mission oh man so much yeah they go back to this motel oh, of course they do because again it's we've paid for the room <laughs> we're gonna shoot the hell out of it um uh, Van Helsing and her, they're just kind of talking about eventually like he gets to why they, they share a, a kind of a common, I don't know, need for revenge when it comes to Vlad. Like um, he explains that his father 
Conrad Van Helsing was turned into a vampire by Vlad, which is a cool enough, you know, little addition here. So essentially turning his father into the one thing, like he was a vampire hunter, right? Yeah. And so turning him into the thing he hates the most. And it, it forced his son to have to kill his father, he, yeah. you know, stakes him through the heart. And um, yeah, I think uh, Vlad uses that on him in the truck. Yeah. Yeah. He was talking about how confident uh, he was with his right. faith and then he brings up his old man. Yeah. And then weirdly, after he tells her that he had to knife his old man, uh, she kind of puts the moves on him, tries to kiss him. <laughs> And he even has a line that's like, I can't believe I'm saying this, but uh, now is not really the best time. <laughs> you know, it, it's just an odd setup here. Um, I don't know. It, it kind of sets up something later, kind of. But, you know, ultimately showing that there's this romance building between them, I suppose. Well, they wanted to also use the presidential suite of the hotel. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he gets to go to his, I guess it's supposed to be his apartment. or Oh, house. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he arrives yeah. At, at, yeah, what I assume is his apartment. Yeah. And, You're right. It's totally just a, one of your fancier hotel rooms. <laughs> um, and there's a pleasant surprise. It turns <laughs> sour. Yeah, this, this <laughs> lady vampire is waiting for him, gets her tits out for him. <laughs> I guess to distract him. Yeah, that's how I took it. I while it was freaking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> while another lady vampire cracks him over the head. Now, I don't know. You could have just had him crack him over the head when his back was turned. I don't think you needed to to have two of them and, and have one of them take your top off. I don't know. Hey, but everyone's got their specialty. I guess, yeah. Oh, and I did gotta, read a, a quote. The 90s. Yeah. I read a quote from... Jim Winorski, the director of this of this movie, that said uh, uh, the greatest special effects are breasts, like they always work, or something like that. So I think it's that's what you're getting here is just hey, let's throw some boobs in this shot. Yeah, it's a uh, you know it's a uh, a staple of '90s cinema, '80s yeah. cinema, '70s cinema. Yeah, like so, just random nudity. Right. So they've captured. Uh, Adam. Oh, um, before they knocked him out, there's something that I actually, we, we kind of touched on it later, but you hear the flutter uh, that's associated with them turning into, into bats. And so it does kind of tell me that these two oh. ladies that attacked him did turn into bats. So I guess that's kind of, we'll get to it in a little bit. We'll actually see some other vampires yeah. transform into bats, but it does tell me here that, okay, these, these uh, vampires, arrived here as bats so <clears throat> that was apparently they don't have to follow the rule where you must be invited in no that doesn't seem to be a thing so uh there's a scene with walsh walsh is is at uh, van helsing's like older partner yeah uh so there's a scene with with walsh and vampirella back at the purge base and you know she's just finding out that he's the adam has been kidnapped and they essentially do this uh Little quick little scene setting up that Walsh doesn't trust her, doesn't believe her story, thinks that she's working for for Vlad, but that Vlad wants a trade off between uh, Demos and Adam, and she's going to be the one to facilitate that. Like she'll take Demos to the drop off point, and they'll swap Demos for Adam. The uh, most. Uh... Conspicuous drop-off point, <laughs> aka Vegas junkyard Scooby-Doo layer. It's a, it's a graveyard for Vegas signage. Yeah. And there's that still works. It's all the yeah, all the old <laughs> you know uh, signs that are uh, on the strip. Yeah, they're all just like in this graveyard, and they're all lit up, and <clears throat> it's weird. It kind of looks like it should be a carnival. And uh, Demos and his uh, pleather. Uh, sun suit. <laughs> oh yeah, so much pleather in this movie. They uh, they pull off the this. Uh, oh, go ahead. A lot of chafing in this film. Oh, I'm sure. A lot of baby powder. Yeah, you know, underneath. Baby powder budget must have been out of this world. Oh yeah, it's like half the budget right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. And we. Uh, wait, this is where they figure out somehow she has a tracking device on her with mental power or a de- like I couldn't figure out how they knew 
she had that tracker on her armband? I think they vaguely enough show one of them having some kind of uh, like a scanner. Or something? Scanner, yeah. It's not really explained, but they say like, "Oh, we can tell you're being tracked by this." Uh, and so she pulls out her. Sorry, to back up a little bit, she gave Walsh one of her blood serum capsules yeah. for them to like see if you can use this in any way in your fight, I guess, against vampires. And they gave it back to her, and, which it contained then obviously a little transmitter uh, tracking device. Oh, God. I forgot they have tiny capes. <laughs> <laughs> totally yeah. Forgot about Quinn, that. I think, has a cape. Yeah. Um, maybe some of them, some of the other ones do. I yeah. saw it fluttering in the breeze. Oh, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. So they Show pull them. off. <laughs> they pull Is it off like the, the bigger your cape, the more important you are? Must and... be because cape size will come into yeah. play later. <laughs> yes, it will. Um, yeah, they pull off this uh, prisoner exchange and the whole time, uh, the few times that... Uh, Adam has spoken. It's this new, deep, you know, very deep voice. And uh, you find out that it's, you know, some vampire has this uh, shape shifting ability to disguise himself as Adam because she, yeah. he gets knocked from bats that can turn into random yeah. people. Yeah. So the real Adam is yet, you know, is unaccounted for here. This is when quinn says you know you're being tracked and she she realizes it and throws away the transmitter and there's like a little bit of a fight ensues um one of the vampires points out like oh there's a purge team you know hiding over there and then (laughs) vampirella flutters away as a bat uh people open fire some of the they they kill two vampires and then the rest of them uh flutter off that pretty much takes us like to the final act where uh, well, they meet with the uh, mafia bosses of the vampires, and yeah, it's kind of a scene from uh, from Goldfinger, where Goldfinger meets in, in one of the old James Bond movies. Goldfinger meets with the, these a bunch of uh, crime lords, you know, uh, American gangsters, mm-hmm. and he's like trying to get them all to buy into whatever plan he's selling, and. It's kind of what this scene reminded me of, but uh, Vlad has the the heads of like twelve vampire families essentially all gathered, and he's explaining to them. Or I guess I, I might be jumping ahead a little bit because there's kind of a scene with uh, Vlad seeing uh, uh, what's his name uh, Demos for the first uh, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vlad and Demos <laughs> are talking and and there's you think that vlad's gonna kill demos because he is the one that you know ratted him out in vegas um but he lets him live i guess there's enough reason um uh demos apparently kind of he manages a bunch of crime around the world so it's like they all have their own roles and and vlad doesn't really want to upset that with the uh with his plan that he's about to you know unveil I guess. So it's kind of easier to keep him in his role than kill him and find, you know, replace him, I guess. So, um, then there, yeah, then there's a scene with Vlad explaining to all the, all the heads of the vampire, you know, families or whatever that, and out of nowhere, he (laughs) explains that there's this Draculon, Draculonian satellite. Yeah. And he might say that there are 12 of them. I forget that we only oh, ever yeah. see remember. one yeah. satellite, but I think he says that there are satellites all around the earth, right? They, they're invisible just because <laughs> um, they're all positioned around the earth and they're going to be able to affect the, the planets like, it's going to create like a nuclear winter. Where That's right. The sun is blocked out for a extended period of time. He says, which That's right. is nice and vague, like very vague. They, they, I think kind of allude to like, it'll last a long time. Essentially. Yeah. Uh, creating a dark age so that the vampires will be free to roam the earth, you know, no concern with uh, daylight uh, long enough for them to 
completely established dominance over the, the planet. So not a terrible plan. It's just the satellite thing comes out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, I guess it makes sense. They came here in a spaceship. So it's, it makes sense enough that they would have access to technology to put a satellite in orbit. They could have established it a little bit, you know, they had, uh, you know, the scene with her coming in the shuttle. They could have had a scene with them in space and dealing with, I don't know. I'm not going to try and rewrite this movie. (laughs) At this point, I thought the movie was going to be wrapping up soon. I know. We still have 30 minutes of movie left. (laughs) It just keeps going. Yeah. Um. (laughs) I was like, all right, we're getting to the end. And I'm like, why is there so much time left on that bar? (laughs) Yeah. Um, And even like these, these uh, vampire heads, like they don't even look, they don't look like they're buying into it. They look just, as like full of disbelief as as we do <laughs> yeah. like it doesn't seem to inspire anybody in this <laughs> plan that he unveils so it's kind of weird he he comes across as needy mm-hmm. and wanting to impress but failing miserably yeah there's a lot of exp- like telling us that he's the most powerful vampire yeah. just not a lot of showing us that you know <laughs> no. so then there's a scene with Walsh, like he gets his literal come to Jesus moment where yeah. I guess they have a chapel in their purge facility. It kind of makes sense enough that yeah. they are, they use religious iconography in their fight. So I guess it makes sense enough that they would have um, this, this chapel here. So he goes to essentially pray to Jesus and, and ask for God to, but it to sounds like intervene. He not really into jesus much i couldn't so. tell because he does wear a crucifix but that could just he, be for protection yeah he he, well, he kind of says like you know some of the effect that he hasn't really been i haven't really I talked to you in a while have i big yeah. guy yeah and i always thought that's where the power of the crucifix came from was like their belief in the maybe symbol. yeah but i don't know yeah um so then it's daytime here at uh I guess purgatory in this the old west vampire base. Uh, Vampirella shows up. She takes out some guards. Who I like that they establish these guards are non-believers. They're they're just they're just jobbers, you know. They're just <laughs> hired goons. One of yeah, them like, says, these guys "Are weird. They're up all night and sleep all day." <laughs> yeah, yeah. They don't. Yeah, I like that they establish these guys don't buy into whatever this is. They just work here. Um, uh, she takes him out, you know, obviously easy enough and, uh, goes to Vlad's coffin, which is empty. And then she turns around and Vlad's just behind her. It's kind of, I guess, kind of a setup, you know, uh, Vlad's coffin being bait. Cause they know that she's in the area. They know that, uh, someone spotted her, her bat form when they all kind of arrived here. Yeah, I've noticed they like to use the same lighting trick of like a random spotlight. Yeah. Like they do it with him in the chapel and then her on the staircase coming up. Oh, sure. (laughs) They have this bright light just coming out of nowhere. Yeah. It always seems to be on the ground or Mm -hmm. shooting up. Yeah. So Vlad, I think this is when he explains to her that she is, she's from the like more barbarian region in on Draculon Mm -hmm. like that's where she hails from and that she was adopted or whatever or at least taken in by her father and kind of telling us that like she comes from the more savage you know vampires like Vlad does he says yeah I you're from an area that is not too far from where I'm from and she's like are we related somehow and he Vlad gives her the line like in more ways than you could know or something like that. Yeah. And I almost think, are they going to try and establish that he's her father? Yeah. You know, it, it, it really it seems like that, you know, in a creepy the way they've made out earlier in the movie, <laughs> yeah. but then it, that, that completely gets dropped. You know, they don't, it doesn't go anywhere. They don't pick this up, you know, anywhere later on in the movie. It just, it's just this like implied. Yeah, uh, I wrote down is this going to be a Luke and Leia thing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, you know, 
she gets thrown in with uh adam she she gets thrown convenient. in this game convenient yeah but it's uh it's kind or of a nice it? thing because uh they take her you know blood serum armband from her and they know yeah. that she's going to need to feed soon and she's going to have one choice and that's going to be to bite adam so it's kind of a cool setup you know but uh I mean, again, it, this is just Blade, because uh, Blade does yeah. the exact same thing. But Blade, you know, came after this, so really, you know, <laughs> kind of. You heard it here, folks. Blade still Vampirella. I mean, no, I mean it's not a completely <laughs> original idea. There's a similar thing that was done in the uh, cartoon Zootopia. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. But yeah, it's essentially any like I'm gonna put you in with the monster. You're gonna turn and and be forced yeah. to attack the the person you care about, sort of yep. thing. Um, but it, it totally works. You know, she does a smart thing here where she like shackles herself because uh, yeah. she knows I'm gonna try to attack you. So I need to we need to try and keep me at bay. And then like there's there's something at, at the purge location. I don't really. Oh, there is a little bit where. Uh, Vampirella wrote Walsh a note saying that she was headed to save uh, Van Helsing, I guess, and that inspires Walsh enough to uh, gear up and be the cavalry later, I guess. The So she shackles herself, and somehow this is when the movie decides that it's going to get sexy with these two. <laughs> <laughs> like, she... she they yeah. they chain her up and that's when he makes his move on her and she's telling him like you know basically no i i could hurt you and he says well it'll be worth it or something like that so it implies i think a lot like it essentially has them making out and then it fades to black so i don't know if it is is telling us that something more happened or not but either way it's it's still kind of a weird like decision to i don't know build on this romance plot there's a lot of, you know, follower scenes. Everyone's like in Wiccan robes now. And... Yeah, he does. Uh, Vlad does have like this rally speech moment yeah. where he's he's rallying the troops. And what I love about it <clears throat> is that it's he basically says many of you won't survive this war, but I'm willing to sacrifice as many of you as necessary, <laughs> you know, and they just uh... go with it. Like he's basically telling them that you guys are expendable a lot of you are going to die and I'm okay with that. So <laughs> Go I, <get> re- <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> and then, uh, this is when like she starts to feed on Adam yeah. and they decide to, to replay Daltrey's like blood sucking song that we heard earlier. <laughs> so we get that again. Um, as yeah, as she's, uh, she kind of, she tries to fight herself, you know, she doesn't want to, because she, she was able to eventually snap the, the shackles that she was in. So she's about to attack Adam, yeah. and she stops herself. She's fighting with herself enough of like, no, I can't do this, that sort of thing. But he tells her, no, you need to feed on me. You know, you need your strength, blah, blah, blah. Um, then uh, well, then uh, he's, uh, Adam is like, he's, he's given her blood and still alive enough to, oh, to, uh, to, robed guards come to get her to bring her to like this i don't know i call it a ceremony i guess um yeah because she's fed so she's yeah i guess supposed to be more like them right that's right yeah they think that she's essentially going to be on their side now that she's full of human blood so she's in control enough she kills the guards Um, adam pretends to be a guard and takes her to to where vlad is with all of his followers um they it have it takes way too long here it really does they have a i mean there's a creepy makeout scene with oh yeah ball tree that leads to a crotch knee yeah he's he's asks her if she's she's one of us now and yeah. she says you know something to the effect of not quite or something like that and then just knees him and uh she knees him in the dick and then she just immediately shoots the uh the computer that controls the satellite and, and it vaporizes or something or it just makes the satellite disappear <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah. yeah and then there's a weird bat chase scene and oh god the 
So I think at the same time, the uh, purge, you know, crew, the the cavalry shows up. So yeah. there's kind of a, a battle going on outside, and yeah, uh, Vlad flies off, and I think at the same time, Vampirella also flies off. But she kind of fights with I think one or two people. Um, some of the regulars kind of get killed. Uh, Walsh kills yeah. uh, Demos. Um, the nerdy guy who was at the lab with his like sunlight gun, he kills yep. uh, Quinn, just fries him with uh, sunlight. I don't remember what Adam happened. Adam gets the girl. Does he? he okay. shoots her with a gun. And, ah. and that's pretty much it, really. Yeah. <laughs> All the uh, time is spent with Vlad running away and turning into a bat and out of a bat. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so essentially Vampirella and Vlad fly off, and then we're at the, the Hoover Dam. <laughs> because we're in Nevada <laughs> and it's a location that they probably got because it's at nighttime. So there's yeah. no tours going on. So it's relatively empty. So it's probably pretty cheap. I like to think that they just took the tour and then hit out. Oh yeah. <laughs> Once yeah. night fell, they brought the cameras up. That could, I would believe that as well, <laughs> but they make use of this dam. Uh, they're running in and out of these like catacombs that run through it. And hmm. this huge turbine room that is part of the, I know, I think it's part of the dam tour. I'm not sure, but I know I've seen this, you know, uh, part of the Hoover dam before in movies, uh, Vegas vacation, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. um, oddly, I think in X-Men two, uh, Jean and Scott have a fight in this same, turbine room location it's like part of they they use this we'll call it a set they use this location as um the dam the facility that created wolverine where oh yeah just part of that that end kind of sequence in uh x-men 2 so i think this is the same location but anyways it's there's so much running around and vlad climbing stairs and then her following you know so much running around and climbing yeah. stairs and just it's like they're just really padding a lot of time. Yep. Um, a game of tag for like <laughs> 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, but I will say once they are finally in the same, you know, scene, it's a good fight because uh, either the I know some of it's stunt doubles because um, they've got someone with a really bad wig playing uh, <laughs> Vlad. But the the stunt people like they commit; they're like wailing on each other. I think it's really it's the fight is really well done. Anyways, I but just saw the wig. <laughs> yeah, uh, she gets like this weather vane kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> she rips it off the the balcony <laughs> and just impales him with it. Yeah, and then and he he's... pulls it out and blood gushing out of his mouth. Yeah, and uh, he's holding up this metal rod, and then he gets <laughs> struck by lightning. He gets impaled, then he gets struck by lightning, and then he bursts into flames. So and then falls down the dam, <laughs> and then falls off the dam. I've said it before. I love, I love a uh, a man on fire stunt, and this one doesn't disappoint. I mean, it's it's a terrible like the stunt person is wearing a Roger Daltrey mask and wig, you know. So that is very obvious that it's a. Uh, it looked know, like a hood was on, like. It may have been kind of a hood, just a, uh, yeah, it may have been a whole thing just to protect the stunt person, but you know, it's clearly not Roger Daltrey. And of course it's not, but, but, but the dude is on fire and that's all I care about. So, but then it's like, they throw a burning rag doll when, when it goes down the, uh, (laughs) the dam. So that's, that's pretty funny. And she got the necklace back. Which did they establish a necklace? No. Okay. I assume it's her grandfather's. I, or well, yeah. Father's, I, I assume it's her father's necklace that <laughs> he probably she picks had it up. on. I just didn't notice. <clears throat> yeah, she picks it up. She says some. She she basically is telling her her dead father that she is now going to start her call it a mission to find other vampires who have been created by Vlad that. Like if they can be turned to good, then so be it. If they are 
um, <clears throat> like literal, you know, followers of him and can't be turned. I think it kind of implies that she'll kill them. So she's essentially uh, outlining that she's going to become like a vampire hunter. But, she know she, you know, at least says that, like, some of them may not be bad. They're, they they may not be true believers of what Vlad was kind of selling. Yeah. Kind of establishing that if they can, if she can teach them to live with humans the way that she does, then, you know, we'll be better off or whatever. So kind of ends with a little bit of, you know, some some hope there. But then it literally ends right there. Like, it just cuts to black and it's done. Like, it's yeah. Just, I was expecting, like I said, I was expecting to meet back up with uh, uh, Forey, you know, maybe set up something there. Or Adam. Or, like. <laughs> yeah, go back to Adam and establish that, uh, you know, that they're going to work together or continue what they have going on. But no, it just literally, you know, she she says this little monologue thing and it just fades to black. So, okay. Yeah. It feels so long throughout the entire thing. Oh god! Yeah. And then it just ends so Done. abruptly. <laughs> yeah. Somehow. And I did go back. He did steal it off uh, his body after he bit him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Okay. But yeah, I wouldn't have noticed. <laughs> yeah, it it was not a like plot point. Like split you know, split second, and nobody mentions it. So. But yeah, that's uh, Vampirella, and I never need to watch this again. Yeah. No. It. Uh, it hurt. <laughs> you know it as i was watching it and i was like three pages of notes in and then i paused it and i was like i'm only 15 minutes into this thing how is there so much for me to write down because it all felt like they 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 cram so much into this movie especially in the the first you know first act yeah um <clears throat> that i just it, it was and it's meaningless yes it, but it was painful to be like, I still have an hour and, you know, hour and change. Like I'm still like only a, you know, a few minutes in, like it was, it was daunting. Yeah. There were a few things. <laughs> so I, Oh God, if you are considering watching this movie, watch the credits and like really pay attention to the credits. I'm sure I missed some of them, but they're just, fucking around in the credits because <clears throat> here's some of the things I noticed in the, you know, how movies have carpenters, you know, carpenters are building the sets and whatnot. Yeah. So in the carpenters section, there's Mary Chapin, Mary Chapin carpenter, who was a singer, I believe. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's also listed in the carpenters section, uh, Mike hammer, Nick nails and Patrick wood. So oh, okay. wood hammer and nails are all, uh, represented in the carpenter yeah. uh yeah credits in the electric department kevin watt and bruce bolt so they're just making shit up <laughs> or like the actual carpenters and electric people like didn't want their names associated in this movie and maybe they just made up credits um in the one of the grips is named pepe roni <laughs> Pepperoni. Um, they must have put it in a later because I'm looking at like the carpenters and I don't see those or the grip. Well, I think I for different there's units, another... there's different you know uh, okay. sections. Like uh, there's multiple like sections of of these. It just depends on like okay. which location or which gotcha. you know, unit. Oh, okay. One of the gaffers, mm -hmm. will will he make it? Oh, good God. <laughs> yeah. So those are okay. just some some fun little uh, credits that I noticed. Um, it's the Draculon sequence that has the okay. carpenters with the names you mentioned. Okay, and uh, that's weird. Yeah, yeah, it's real weird. Um, <clears throat> at the very end of the credits, it says Vampirella will return in Death's Dark Avenger. So we got that to look forward to. So they didn't make that. Right? They never made it. No. Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um. I want some of these names to be real. I know. I, I tried looking in IMDb, and obviously none of them uh, produced any results. There's a script supervisor on the second unit called Happy King. Yeah, and so there were several that just sounded weird, but it's also yeah. like maybe it's real. I don't. They weren't puns, so I couldn't tell if they were real or not. So, because then there's like Slugger Cusack, yeah. and Homer Garrity, which sounds like Slugger and Homer. Like, 
baseball oh, terms. Yeah, there okay. Yeah. So again, so, yeah, I think they're just making know. up credits. I don't know. It's weird. Taffy O'Day. Yeah. <laughs> Orville Ketchum. <laughs> uh, oh, there's pepperoni. Yep. Yeah. No, it's mm. All right. Well, the best part of this movie has been the credits so far. Mm-hmm. I found it very enjoyable. So, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, like All we, right. you kind of said, like this feels like it should have been, you know, made like in the seventies or whatever. Yeah. I, I, I read around, you know, and like the last couple of years, I've watched a lot of hammer horror movies, okay. you know, the yeah. Peter Cushing and Sir Christopher Lee and mm-hmm. people like that. And, um, like the Dracula and, Frankenstein movies and stuff that they did a ton of. Um, they're fun. They're they're really cheesy. They're really you know uh, campy effects, but they're fun yeah. movies. And this is what this movie should have been. It this movie should have been made twenty years or earlier. And I found out that they tried to make this movie twenty years earlier. Um, uh, I found a a blog. Um, Actually, it's a, like a blog from the uh, the De Montfort University at Leicester. I think it's like probably their film school. I think like that their department. Anyways, um, they uh-huh. had a blog and they were talking about just the old Hammer horror and some of the things that didn't get made. And it says that Vampirella was planned to be a big budget hammer horror in the 1970s with Peter Cushing signed on to star along with former Beatle Ringo Starr and <laughs> yeah, and Hollywood legend Orson Welles with uh, Barbara, Barbara Lee as the superhero vampire. Uh, but the studio's financial woes meant that it was canned at the 11th hour. And if you look up like Hammer Horror, Vampirella, look up Barbara Lee, they definitely cast her and they definitely did a costume fitting because there are tons of photos of her in in the like co- comic accurate costume. Oh, God. <laughs> it, it looks good. It looks oh, it, really? it looks so good that they used I think they uh, it was Warren Publishing and then the Vampirella comic book rights got sold to Harris publications. So at some point they took all these photos of Barbara Lee in costume and they ended up just using them in the actual Vampirella comics, like covers. Cause they, they had these, you know, photos done. The movie didn't get made, but I guess they were able to use them. You know, they wanted to use them since they were. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can find a bunch of Barbara Lee, as Vampirella, you know, covers any, anyways on the, on the magazine. Yeah. So it's like, th- that's the time period this movie should have been made. Um, I, it, it, the story I don't think would have been anything like what we get here, but okay, that's uh, not as bad as I was thinking more Borat. So I thought it was gonna be like a string <laughs> <laughs> basically. Right. Um, okay. So it's yeah. not as awful as I thought. Heroic. <laughs> uh, oh man. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's hard. It, yeah. Cause I almost was going to say when she saves the nerd in the alley, when she first sure. arrives, but like, didn't feel like he was in any mortal danger. Probably her controlling, wanting to bite Adam in the. Yeah. Cell, that's pretty I good. I mean, I mean, aside from Walsh, and <laughs> Walsh, you know, they're like, cavalry they arrive he shoots yeah. demos like right when that's he's true. about to kill her i think so that's pretty good um i don't know <laughs> i'm so like uninspired for heroic and villainous for this villainous i'll give it to walsh for the whole jelly scene <laughs> he seemed like the biggest villain in the movie yeah <laughs> from the vampire's perspective <laughs> yeah yeah this is definitely a uh movie where you could kind of see that from a certain point of view, the the humans are cruel and sadistic with the, uh, when they get their hands on a, a vampire. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Can we rate this thing? Yeah, please. Is no stars an option? Is zero? Yeah, was, Can we do a zero? Or? <laughs> I, I was thinking the same thing. I was um, like, I'll give it a 0.5 <laughs> if I have to, <laughs> but, <clears throat> There yeah, was. I'll, I'll give it a point five just for the credits. <laughs> nice. 
Uh, you know, um, some people tried. Yeah. But I don't want to give them zero. <laughs> I'll, so. I'll give them a 0.5 because, <laughs> I mean, Roger Daltrey, like I said, he's he commits. He's going yeah. for it. Uh, I don't mind Talisa Soto as uh, Vampirella at all. Like, I think she's she's fine. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I cannot give this thing like anything higher than I could maybe go a one, but I'm I'm feeling generous. I'll give it a one. Wow. What's that make it a uh yeah, uh point seven five? That, that, yeah. Eek. Yeah, this just it was it was just bad. Not in a fun way. It yeah, it wasn't really fun. was not bad in a fun way. I mean, if this isn't the lowest rated thing we've ever done. I mean, it must be right. I'm thinking I mean, Howard Howard the Duck was really low, but Captain, even it, or not Captain America, um, Fantastic Four. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. The other Super, one? Supergirl got a 1.5. Hmm. Oh, 0.5 for Captain America. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. That that would put this above Captain America, which I think I like better. Um, yeah. So this is on you for yeah, no one. doubt. <laughs> um. Oh. Shit, I was looking at your column in our rate. Oh. So we gave a 1.5. Okay, to the original Captain America movie we did from the 70s. 1.25 for that Captain America one. Howard the Duck was real low. Maybe it wasn't. I remember movie. being that low. Yeah, because that was like, what, 86? Something Howard like the that. Duck. Oh, 0.833. Wow. Yeah, so just above this one, which it was bad. You know, but watching this, I was like, this is worse than Howard the Duck. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, this so. this definitely comes in at the lowest, which feels completely earned. Yeah. It was just kind of a waste. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, we watched it, so you didn't have to. I yeah. Say. And good luck finding it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I won't say why, but shout out to. No, I won't. I won't. <laughs> I won't say yeah. how, how we watched Let's just this. say I uh, did a voice search on my Roku yeah. for Vampirella, and it said, excuse me? <laughs> like, nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. We had to comb the vast depths of the internet. That's right. To be able to view this, whatever this was. Hmm. I am happy to say that this is over. Yes. Yes, we, we did it. I mean, the the... Good thing it can't be anything worse than this, really. Oh, I mean, you did not just say that. Oh, <laughs> uh, we do have steel coming up, and you know, sometime in the next year. Yeah, well, at least that's got Shaq in it, I guess. I guess. Uh, never seen but it. Yeah, though. we get a, uh, we get like, <laughs> we're gonna have some whiplash because we're getting into some fun ones. The next, the yeah, the next several, I think, should be fun. But yeah, next we do have uh, Star Trek, the uh, Star Trek First Contact, which is going to be a brand new Star Trek for me. I've never seen this one. I've never seen this or right. like the next two. So I've kind of been saving them uh, for, for watching here. So nice. Yeah. So going back to Star Trek, it, I, I enjoyed our last trip with Star Trek. So should be fun. Hopefully. I don't know if this is regarded as a good one or a bad one. So kind of All going right. into it blind. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> is this what you feel like all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll be back with uh, Star Trek First Contact. Uh, we'll probably do a character review between now and then. But uh, I guess until then, stay safe out there, citizens. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Find the show on Facebook and Twitter at Real Comic Heroes. All music and audio are the property of their respective creators. I want to suck your blood. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> okay, count. <laughs> One, oh, two. We didn't even mention that they totally put Roger Daltrey in a full on oh, yeah. Count Dracula high collar cape. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Uh -huh. I can't do any more. Yeah, no. Make it stop. <laughs>